let me welcome you to our Orange Experience Program, Wellness Beyond Workouts. My name is Chris Velarde. I'm with the Office of Alumni Engagement. I'm a class of 95 alum as well. And it is uh, going to be really interesting, I think, if you have no idea about what the Barn Center is all about tonight. You are going to learn a ton. You're also hopefully going to get some good ideas to take back with you as you think about wellness in your own life. That's really the, the big idea here. So first of all, let me kind of just do a couple of housekeeping notes. We are happy to provide closed captioning in this program. So make sure you check out the Zoom chat. There will be instructions on how to activate closed captioning if that is something you are interested in. Uh, you'll be able to open the chat um, in your toolbar. That's at the bottom of your screen as well. Keep that chat handy as well, because if you have questions as the program is going on or something you wanna know a little bit more about, please drop that in the chat, ask your question. We will uh, do our best to try to answer it as we're going along as well. We're gonna have time for kind of a general Q&A at the end of our program, at the end of our tour. But if there's something that uh, we show you here during this program that you say, I wanna know more about that right now, let us know in the chat. Um, and we will do our best to address your question in a, in a timely way as well. We are re recording this program so that we can share it later with uh, other audiences who may not be able to be here this evening. If you um, don't wanna have your image recorded, that's fine. You can turn off your camera, that's not a problem. You can do that right at the toolbar as well. And again, uh, as you listen and as you see all of the things that the Barn Center has to offer, and you have some questions, you wanna learn more about something, please let us know as we go along and uh, or hold your question until the end and we'll make sure that we address it then. At this point, I would like to introduce our presenter, the person who knows far more about the Barnes Center than I do, and that's Dr. Corey Wallach, who is the Executive Director, Health and Wellness at the Barnes Center at the Arch. Uh, we are also going to hear from some students who are with us as well, who are peer educators, and they'll have a, kind of a different perspective in terms of what goes on uh, at, at the Arch as well. And so I think it's going to be a really interesting and informative program. So Corey, the floor is yours. Excellent, thank you, Chris. Good evening, everybody, or morning or afternoon or wherever in the country or world you are. Um, happy and excited to have you here with us. Um, as Chris said, I'm the Executive Director of the Barnes Center at the Arch. Uh, and I have been at SU for 18 and a half years now. Um, so I've gotten to watch sort of the university really change and shift gears in the way we look at health and wellness. I'm a psychologist by training and, and was the head of our counseling center for about 12 years. So um, we're gonna take you on a tour of our space, tell you what the Barnes Center is. And then, yeah, as Chris said, uh, turn this over to our students so you can hear from, from them kind of their experience of being a part of our Barnes Center team and, and the center itself. So if we could hit the next slide, start to take a look at this place. So I'm gonna try to not talk too much uh, for those that know me, once I get talking about the Barn Center, it's easy for me to keep going. It's, uh, there's just so much to say, but I'm just going to kind of give you a high level overview and then we'll show you as much space as we can. Uh, so if you are not familiar with the Barn Center, uh, first and foremost, just things to know. Uh, we have been officially open since Friday the 13th, 2019, September. Um, so a little bit pre-pandemic. We only were able to operate for about six months before pandemic uh, conditions kind of took over. And we joke a little bit that maybe Friday the 13th in September was the wrong day to open, but that's what we did. Um, so we are the brand new inclusive integrated health and wellness complex. What that means in more basic terms is that prior to the Barnes Center opening, the counseling center, the health center, uh, were in separate physical spaces, the recreation spaces were kind of scattered across campus. The idea of the Barn Center was to bring everything into one place and really rebrand everything we do from a health and wellness standpoint. So when you talk to students on campus now, you know, where, are you, where are you heading, what are you up to? I'm going to the barns. Uh, that might mean they're going to counseling. It might mean they're going to do pet therapy. It might mean they're going to health promotion, all sorts of things. But the, the lingo of barns has really taken off super quick. The branding has been really exciting to watch happen. Uh, and, and it's, you know, as it says right on the slide in front of you, so much more than a gym. Uh, we are 300,000 square feet of health and wellness space. So let's go to that next slide and talk a little bit more about kind of what makes up the Barn Center and, and really who we are. Uh, what you see photographed here is our Syracuse University ambulance crew. Um, just real quick, in case you're not familiar with this, then I'll talk more broadly about Barnes. Um, we are one of the few universities in the country that has a full paramedics team connected to our health center. 
Uh, as you can see in that photo, two full functioning ambulance rigs and a student staff of 50. These are all certified EMT members. Uh, so they are part of our student crew here. Looking at the entirety of the Barnes Center, we have, when we're fully staffed, about 130 full-time staff members. Um, and again, like I said, that's counting our staff in health promotion and education, recreation, counseling, health, and then a really robust operations team as well to support everything. Uh, we have, the number varies a little bit, but you know that 44 number kind of pops up once in a while around here. So that's, that's roughly our target in terms of our number of student care educators and health promotion. And those are two of our students you'll meet here in a little bit. Uh, the peer educators are really, they're just such an awesome resource on campus, get to provide education and information to our student population on a range of topics. Uh, and then we are a rather large student employer on the recreation side of the house, one of the largest student employers on campus actually, with 450 student staff making up our ranks. So when you kind of total headcount, we have almost 650, 700 faculty staff students really kind of supporting student wellness just in this one facility. It's really a pretty cool space. Let me take that next slide. So I'm gonna ease off the gas a little bit here and slow down and really give you a sense of what we do. And then we're gonna show you a really cool 360 tour of some of the space. So again, as I run through these kind of points here, just keep in mind that when we're talking about the Barn Center, the idea was to bring health, counseling, recreation and health promotion and education into one space, have our students access this all in one location, um, healthcare team, counseling team, rec team, education team, peer educators, all working in sync together. So you'll notice that when I go through these programs, we're not talking about them programmatically as in this space is run by this group or that group. It's really the barn center. These are all of our collective services. So let me run through some of these things real quickly here. Um, primary healthcare, we have a team of about 50 providers when you count our nursing staff, our docs, nutritional staff, psychiatry staff, um, as you can imagine, uh, the, the load that that group has carried since uh, pandemic started two years ago is unbelievable. Uh, we have, for those of you who are familiar with Flanagan Gymnasium, we've taken that space over as part of our space now, and we run a full COVID testing center. Uh, so it's really pretty amazing. Uh, mental health care services, we are one of the largest counseling centers in the country now. Um, the, the need for mental health support services for students continues to grow and grow. And I can tell you in a staff to student ratio, we are one of the best resource centers in the country. It's pretty amazing. You know, as I said, I've been here for 18 and a half years to watch the growth of counseling services during that time is unbelievable. Um, I'm gonna hold on describing the, the Crowley Family Mind Spa and the Walters Pet Therapy Room for just a minute, because we're actually gonna take you inside those spaces and really want you to see those spaces. Um, meditation services, again, we are going for wellness here, the total package of wellness. So we have a beautiful meditation room up on the third floor. It's where the gymnastics team actually used to be in the old gym. Um, so it's an extra high roof, beautiful lighting, space that's open for classes of meditation, yoga, prayer, mindfulness, really cool stuff. And again, we're gonna show you some spaces that's not part of our virtual tour tonight, but you're gonna have access to the virtual link and you can look at all these spaces yourself as well. Um, so some really cool meditation space. I already mentioned nutrition. We do have two full-time dietitians, uh, certified nutritionists on staff, supporting students around concerns ranging from eating disorders to body image to I just wanna be healthier. Uh, those folks are embedded within the health team, but work right across all of our systems. Uh, full retail pharmacy. So I can't see all of you right now, so I don't know what year you graduated, but unless it was the last two years, then we are offering something on campus that I really wish you had had when you were a student here, which is an on-campus full service pharmacy. Uh, we fill all of our prescriptions. For those that remember our old health center, it was literally a window cut in the side of a wall. Um, now you walk in and there are shelves and aisles of products that can be purchased over the counter stuff and we're filling prescriptions. It's a really cool space. Um, our peer education groups, you're gonna hear more from our peer eds in a little bit. So I'm not gonna talk too much on their behalf but just know that we have, as I said, over 40 peer educators um, leading all sorts of wellness leadership education, whether it be on sexual health, COVID, um, sense of belonging, self-esteem, anxiety. It's really just a wide range of stuff, um, all kind of rolled in together. It's something new for the Barnes Center and the university, which is our Wellness Leadership Institute, where we provide over 50 different educational sessions for our students, uh, they, both virtual and in-person. 
Uh, again, our peer educators, our student staff, it's just done an amazing job of creating an opportunity for education, both in person and virtually. Uh, feel free, go to the Barn Center website at some point, check it out. You actually have access virtually and remotely to many of our sessions. Uh, range of really cool stuff. If we can go to that next slide, thank you. Uh, so again, a photo on the right here, and we're gonna take you into this space in a little bit. That's our eSports room. Uh, game changer for the university, absolute game changer. We've got a really cool space that we'll talk about in a minute and show you, so I'm gonna hold on to that. Um, climbing wall. We have a from floor to ceiling 50 foot climbing wall um, and then a separate rock wall. If you build it, they will come. We're having about seven to 10,000 students come and climb with us uh, in an academic year right now. It's really pretty cool space. Uh, we're offering 50 plus drop in fitness classes every week. We've gone to a really accessible model for faculty, staff, and students. For those of you who go to your own gym and you're used to maybe, I signed up for this six week Zumba class and I just don't feel like going today. We've dumped that whole model. Our classes are all independently run. There's not a six week class. It's do you wanna come do this or that or that tomorrow or tonight or today? Really great stuff. Uh, intramural sports and our sports clubs. One of the biggest offerings that we have from our recreation department. We have over 50 sport clubs. So those are programs that are competitive with other uh, regionally for the most part, but some of our, our teams are traveling internationally as well. Our rugby team actually pre COVID was supposed to get onto Argentina for a tournament. Uh, so a lot of engagement for our sport clubs and then intramural sports here on campus have about 2,500 students participating each year. Uh, basketball reigns supreme at Syracuse, obviously a really robust basketball uh, intramural program. Um, the pool and spa, we're not going to get to show you that pool on our tour today, but again, we'll send you the link so you can check out the barns in detail. Really cool space. Uh, and then basketball courts, basketball courts, and more basketball courts. So that's like my real quick run through of the barn center. We're gonna take a little bit deeper dive into two or three spaces, talk about them, but then I wanna go through this quickly because I just wanna show it to you. Um, so the eSports room, uh, let's just talk about eSports both at the Barn Center and then you at home. Um, eSports, for those who are not familiar, uh, we're talking about gaming, I guess in basic terms. Uh, probably really got its growth as the term eSports with programs like FIFA and Madden and NBA. And a lot of sports programs that and they were a big thing when I was in high school and college, just a couple of years ago. Uh, but it's now really taken off into all sorts of various games, as, as I'm sure you all are familiar with. Um, let's not get confused about what gaming is and isn't and just think that it's just about I'm sitting around playing a game. Um, Esports is the fastest growing industry in the world right now. Uh, it's connected to analytics. It's connected to health outcomes and measures. There are entire communications and broadcast programs built around esports. And we have sporting venues across the country that are filling up with 50, 60,000 spectators to watch gaming tournaments. So we're talking about a huge industry. Um, here in the Barn Center, uh, we've got 40 plus gaming units and we're gonna take on a virtual tournament. So I won't talk too much about our space, uh, but I want you to really think about though, is that I think gaming can get a bad rap sometimes. Uh, if you go to the negative perspective, people might talk about how it's an addictive behavior or there's a lot of games based on violence. I don't dispute either of those realities, but really, if you look at the positive of eSports, talking about community building, you know, my, my 10 year old son has his headset, he plays games with his buddies, you know, during COVID where he hasn't been able to spend time with them as much in person, they're chatting during the games, they're making jokes with each other. So this, this gaming community is a really great way for people to connect with each other, um, develop some social community and really have a common theme they're building around. The, the, the way in which it can stretch your mind, if you really get into some of the analytic games, it's pretty amazing. Um, there's detective games, mystery games, all sorts of stuff. So think bigger than what you might have normally thought about the gaming industry. Corey, let me, let me jump in here yes. if, and ask about this. I, I have a 14-year-old son and same deal, headset on and you know COVID, no problem. He's hanging out with his friends you know, every night that he's able to be on his game. Does this act as a tool that for for high school kids, for junior high school kids who do kind of really kind of live in that world, view the content on YouTube, kind of want to do something in the gaming world. Does this act as a recruiting tool in some, in some ways? Yeah, we, so part of our admissions tours, we bring students or prospective students and families into the Barn Center now. 
Um, so esports is way bigger than this room. You know, we have hopes as a university to have studies in esports. Newhouse is looking at programs around communications for esports. Falk College is looking at analytics on esports. The iSchool is looking at the programming behind esports. So it's it's a recruiting tool, not just because it's a it's a place to come play games at the Barn Center. It's a recruiting tool because this is a massive industry that's building in our in our global economy right now. And there's academic fields of research that can be based on it that haven't yeah. even been dreamed of yet. Absolutely, I mean, there's yeah, including right. physiology of esports and what's you know what's the physiological experience that someone has while they're gaming. So all sorts of pretty amazing stuff happening there, Chris. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's I, I. I mean, I play as a dad just so I can, you know, stay on, on the same plane as what my my teenagers are interested in, right? Like I have to. I feel like I have to. <laughs> yeah, you know, I I've become my own parents, I guess. When my kids start talking about the games, like, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, I'm mostly in that world too. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, I am. I am my father. No offense, Dad, if you're watching. All right, why don't we take a look at our next space here? So the Crowley Family Mind Spa, and again, we're going to give you the virtual tour in a second here. So the idea of the Crowley Family Mind Spa is to give our students, faculty, and staff an escape from the stress and pressure that is daily life. So within the Crowley Family Mind Spa, we have, as you see in this photo here, we have massage chairs. We have computers that are designed to do guided meditation and breathing exercises. There are um, physical tactile stimulation like sand trays, coloring books. Um, for all of our alumni out there, you might remember that there's several months here where we don't get a lot of sunlight in Syracuse. Um, seasonal affective disorder is real. Um, light therapy boxes are really a phenomenal way to help kind of support that and treat that. Um, the real idea of our Crowley Family Mind Spa is to have it be a place that students can access on their own. Um, during COVID, there are appointments required just because we need to do some spacing and distancing and cleaning and that kind of stuff. But the idea is to provide a service to look at wellness that doesn't require interacting with our staff, quite frankly. Um, not all students want to sit down with a therapist. Not all students want to go to a meditation class. They, they're getting really good. And this goes back to the esports thing in some ways. They're really good at guiding themselves in these programs. And so that's what the Crowley Family Mind Spa is really designed to be, is this space to come in and relax, unwind, unplug, maybe meditate. Like I said, maybe get some benefit of light therapy and really bring down the anxiety that is just so prevalent in all of our, all of our lives, not just our students, but all of our lives. Uh, for those of you not here in Syracuse with us, for those of you that aren't able to step foot into the Crowley Family Mind Spa, I can tell you that meditation, and I tell you this as a psychologist, that meditation is one of the absolute best things you can do to manage stress, anxiety, depression, blood pressure, cholesterol, and all sorts of other physical health problems. The, the benefits of meditation are so powerful. Uh, there are an abundance of YouTube videos. There are apps. There's all sorts of resources. I really strongly encourage you to engage with and really try and practice meditation. It doesn't come easier naturally for many. Um, I will also tell you, um, as alum, if you have an active syr.edu email address, you actually have free access to an app that we have for anybody with that address, which is called Sanvelo, S-A-N-V-E-L-L-O. It's actually the app that we use for our students. Um, we've got about 3,000 student users on Sanvelo. It's all sorts of mindfulness, again, meditation-based apps. Just really great stuff to do at home and on your own time. All right, let's talk pet therapy real quick and then see if we can make technology work and show you the space. So if we can go to the next slide. Thank you. So kind of our last highlighted feature, the Walters Pet Therapy Room. Um, this little fella here is one of our regulars in the pet therapy room. Um, we predominantly right now actually might only have dogs coming in. Um, our hope is to offer a range of other animals and pets coming into our space. Um, what I can tell you, we've done the research right here on campus. So we are doing assessments with students when they come into the barn center, we're doing both a self-reported measure, you know, what's your current level of stress? What's your mood? What's your anxiety? And we are also doing physiological measures. So what is your current pulse? What is your current blood pressure? What, is, what are your measures of anxiety and stress? Students go in, spend some time with their dogs in the pet therapy room. Then we repeat that assessment on the way out. Guess what we find? Stress, anxiety, mood, all drastically improved by hanging out with the dogs for a little while. Um, dogs aren't for everybody, but you find in pet therapy spaces, cats, 
Uh, for those who like turtles, snakes, it's really fascinating. It doesn't actually matter the breed or type of animal, but for those who really want that sense of connection with another living being, the, the power of pets and animals is absolutely unbelievable. Um, what we have seen with our pet therapy room, and it's kind of followed here, you can follow our pet therapy room on Instagram. When our students had to leave campus, when we closed down for COVID, we took pet therapy virtual and our, our student care educators might be able to talk more about this. We have dogs that were regulars in here and our students would walk into Barnes when they were here in person and they would ask for a specific dog. Um, the dogs that were coming into pet therapy, some of them have trading cards, like a baseball card, if you will. And the students learned the dog schedules. When they went back home, when we shut down, they were saying, we miss the dogs. We put them on Instagram and our social media outlets and our, our pet therapy room had about seven or 800 followers on Instagram, just wanting to stay connected with the animals. It's really cool stuff. Um, so that's kind of my high level overview. What we're gonna try and do now if technology will allow us is we're gonna take these slides down. Um, and if we can give me control of the screen, let's see if this works. Bear with me, um, technology and I are not close friends, but I think we can do this. And as he's working on the technology, a reminder that if you have questions along the way, feel free to pop them in the chat. We will do our best to, uh, to get to them. But, you know, I think you undersold it in the beginning, Corey, when you said Barnes is, is more than a gym. It's, it's a lot more than a gym. Yeah, it's a pretty amazing space. Can you all see my screen right now? Good. All right, so um, what we, I've, I've kind of cheated. Instead of bringing you from the outside, I've just got a standing at the Crowley Family of Mind Spot already. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit though, give you a little bit of a view here. So this is our main entrance. Uh, for those of you familiar with campus, that door is facing the physics building. So students might enter in from that door, uh, physics building side of campus, the quad side, if you will. Uh, again, just in the interest of time, I'm not going to take you all around this space, but for those of you who might have been here when uh, this is this is the old Archibald that you're in right now, uh, you might be familiar with when this was the Bursar's office. This is where ROTC used to hang out. That space doesn't look like it used to look anymore, but, but that's our lobby over there. So I'm going to take you actually in uh, to our mind spot for a minute here. See if I can get these dots to work the way they're supposed to. There we go. All right, so as I was mentioning, students can access the space when they come on into the, the Mind Spa. We have massage chairs that students come in. I will tell you, when we first opened the Barnes Center, we burnt these motors out in these massage chairs. We couldn't keep up. Um, user error, we didn't realize we had to give enough time in between for the machines to cool back down. But we had thousands of people coming in to use these massage chairs. Um, when I was telling you about the meditation spaces uh, and some of the technology we have, this is what it looks like. So students can reserve this space. As you see, you've got a chair, there's um, a sand tray there, art, clay, all sorts of things to get that kind of tactile stimulation. Uh, the screen, I think we can, oops, wasn't able to go in as far as I thought. Um, you can see the screen mounted up there on the wall. That's where folks can do guided meditation. There are tablets connected to everything in these rooms. And again, our students can talk a little bit more about this once I'm kind of done rambling on our tour here but wanted to give you a look and feel of this really quite cool space in our mind spot uh, with the wonderful support of the Crowley family. Really, it's just a really, really unique space, really well used. Uh, I'm gonna take us back out of here. So this is some of our supplies. Again, students have access to all sorts of things in this space. I'm bringing it back out into our hallway and show you our pet therapy space. So here is our Walters pet therapy room. Uh, we don't have it photoed with the dogs. You saw that before. Again, uh, furniture down low on the ground intentionally. Notice there's no carpet in this space for our ability to keep it clean. Uh, really a welcoming spot. Uh, when we have pet therapy in action, the students are lined up at this door. And the line goes back that way, up to the front door. During times of COVID, we've actually moved the pets out of that space and into the main atrium there uh, so that we'd have more room. Um, I am about a minute or two ahead of schedule, so I'm going to do something real quick. I'm going to break the rules um, since I'm controlling the screen. I just want to show you all real quick because I mentioned this. Here's our retail pharmacy. Uh, we had to do the videoing for this 360 tour when we weren't fully open, so hence the gate is down. My apologies. We don't get to go in the pharmacy right now, uh, but it's a really cool retail space right there in the main lobby of our wellness space. 
the peer educators hang out back in this back space and you'll get to hear from them in a minute. And Corey, while you're there, can you turn to yes. the left a little bit? I saw the flag on the wall. Yeah. There's a cool story about the flag. Now that's the flag that was flying over the university, right? During kind of the, the bulk of the pandemic. How did it wind up at Barnes? Yeah, so this flag, as Chris said, thank you for that, Chris. Appreciate the shout out there. So this was the flag that was flying for the university almost the entirety of the start of the pandemic. Uh, the chancellor wanted to do something to thank the Barnes Center staff and the student experience staff for keeping the institution going. Uh, so there's a little plaque over here that's really, you can't read it in this tour, obviously, but if you're ever in the building, check it out. It's a note from the chancellor um, acknowledging the work of all the staff that stayed on campus throughout the times of the pandemic uh, to keep the institution going with a particular shout out to the health center staff uh, for managing everything that was going on. So really cool recognition of the work that's been done here. Yeah, yeah. very cool, very well deserved. Really cool stuff. So I'm gonna walk you virtually through the building and bring you down to our esports space. So what you've been in is kind of the wellness side of the building. As we kind of come down the hallway here, we're now gonna enter into the gym entrance. We don't have time to take a full tour, but I'll give you a quick peek at our smoothie bar. There's your outside space. Now, for those who used to play basketball at the old Archibald gym, by the way, look up because that roof is your old basketball court as we come down this main lobby heading into our esports room. So I'm just gonna keep walking. Here's some fitness equipment. You're getting a little extra bonus tour. Um, and I'm gonna see if I can't bring us downstairs. Here's the tricky part. There we go. All right, we're gonna head down into our basement, uh, fitness rooms. I'm just gonna get to the, to the grand show here. More fitness rooms. Ah, and now let's let's just go by and just bring you right into this space. So this is the esports room. Doesn't have quite the same wow when we're in here in the virtual world, but when you walk into this space, the first thing that people say is, oh my goodness. So we have got gaming stations galore. And we have these great wall-mounted TVs that you see. So on these wall-mounted TVs, uh, those who prefer the old school games, we have Sega games, we have the Nintendo games. Those TVs are hooked up so that you can do Mario Kart racing, seven and eight people at a time racing against each other. These TVs on the outside wall also can broadcast the computer stations here. So we do tournaments. Um, we recently did a Fortnite tournament. Uh, so we broadcast those right up on the screens. And then we've partnered out with our friends in Newhouse and other areas where we're then broadcasting that out to the campus community. Um, a true and funny story to tell you about how popular our broadcasting is and our streaming out of esports as you look at this space. Uh, I'm not entirely proud of this, but it's true and it's funny, so I'll tell you. Uh, shortly after the pandemic started and we had to send students home, myself and some others, uh, along with some university leadership, we held a virtual meeting for parents to talk about the pandemic and what was going on, how we're managing it, all this stuff that everybody had so many questions during the work hours. So we did it at seven o'clock Eastern time for the parents and families. Concurrently, our esports room was broadcasting a tournament. Uh, I can tell you the esports tournament drew 400 more viewers than our session on COVID did. So what we are broadcasting out of this space is really pretty popular stuff. I'm going to swing around again just so you can see the space. Um, so high technology room, right? State of the art equipment, state of the art gaming equipment. Yeah, those are poker tables and those are board games. And we have students who are coming into the esports room to just play chess with each other, to play poker and to play card games. I love when I go down there and see that they're surrounded by this technology and they're playing cards with each other. Absolutely love it. Um, so that's a, a quick tour of our space. I could keep talking, but I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna take this down because I'd love to turn this over, Chris, if you're good with that to our students for a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, it's, it's fantastic and I think, I know where I'm going to be if uh, if I get a little bit of break in, in the, the workload, um, I may have to pop into the esports room again just to check it out in case my son potentially potentially wants to, to go to Syracuse and wants to know more about it. Um, I do want to bring in our two um, our two peer educator students. Uh, they are going to, as we talked about, going to give us kind of the, the student perspective because I think it's a very important one. Um, and Amanda Chow. And Missy Roney, they are class of 2022, which means they're entering their final semester on campus, um, which is both exciting and, and bittersweet and sad and fun and crazy and all of those things. So 
Uh, first of all, welcome to both of you. Thank you for, uh, for joining us on, on this program. Give us a sense because Corey talked about it and we have heard the term um, peer educator and give us a little sense of what it is that you do on a on a day-to-day -day basis in that role. Amanda, I'll start with you. All right, well, hi everyone. My name is Amanda and I am one of the peer educators within the health promotion office at the Barnes Center. Um, and so basically peer educators, there are basically three teams of peer educators focusing on different aspects of health and wellness. I'm a peer educator encouraging healthy relationships and sexuality. And so that's, those are topics that my group specifically focuses on. And basically our whole goal is to educate students. We do a lot of outreach events. Sometimes we're asked to go into classrooms, give presentations. We have this little, I'm gonna call it a hut that we set up like two to three times on campus at random locations, we kind of draw students to come talk to us. We, you know, ask them some questions about health and wellness. If they get it right or wrong, they still win a prize and hopefully they leave, you know, learning something new. So we definitely do a lot of outreach with our students and education. And Missy, what is uh, your area of specialty? Amanda mentioned hers. What, what are, what do you focus on? Yeah, um, I focus a lot more on like the substance use side of things and how that works with students, um, both supporting recruit through students in recovery, but also um, advocating for different harm reduction strategies and um, something that's really cool that we've gotten to do a lot this past semester is seeing like how that interacts with bystander intervention with students and mental health and wellness and how that all interacts. Um, so that's a lot of what we do is really just talking to students about their health choices and how to make smart, healthy choices and to create a safe campus atmosphere. Um, we also do a lot of other really cool things that um, we'll do like opioid trainings where we'll do like Narcan certifications, which is something that's been really cool to, be able to offer on campus. Um, and we'll also do, like Amanda mentioned, we do a lot of presentations, a lot of outreach. We do a lot of, um, we have like the physical health hub, but we also have like a mobile one, this little golf cart that goes around campus. That's super fun because um, students are always like, what is this? And that's a way to like get to talk to them about um, whatever health topic we're talking about, but also just we always advocate for all the different resources that Barnes has because there's so many that students can utilize. Um, and yeah, we do a lot of different things, but that's a little bit of what I specifically work with. Yeah, it sounds like it. There's, there's something powerful about hearing this type of conversation peer to peer, hearing whether it's guidance, whether it's advice, there's something that, that makes it a little more comfortable to students to be able to, to get that from a peer. Um, is it, it's gotta be a rewarding thing to be involved in. I would say it definitely is. Like, I feel like constantly through this job, I'm also learning so much, um, so much about, you know, so many different topics regarding health and wellness, how I can be healthy, how I can help other people people be healthy, things like that. I remember when I first started this job and I was going through all the training, I would always come back to my dorm at Ernie Davis and tell my roommate everything I learned. So I was so excited and she was so excited to learn everything as well. And, you know, especially within my um, specialty, talking about like sexual health and wellness and things like that. Nobody really wants to talk to their parent about that or like another adult. So, you know, obviously talking to another student or, you know, even your friend, you know, another peer educator, it's, much more calming and relaxed and a lot more fun. And at the health promotion office, we try to make, you know, talking about these topics as fun and as normalized, because again, like there is a strong stigma surrounding, again, so many different aspects of health and wellness. So our goal is to destigmatize everything and make everyone feel comfortable. Educator and ambassador as well, no doubt about that, for both Barnes and for all the things that, that Barnes has to offer. Missy, there is so much more, and just hearing all of this, it's obvious, but there's so much more of a focus on wellness and, and the, the complete approach to wellness now. This is something that, that students think about, I think, more than certainly in, in my time. And we went to the gym, we played basketball. Basketball, as Corey said, always a thing. But the, the idea of wellness, um, do, do you find that students just kind of can't get enough and want to find out whatever it is, whatever new way they can, they can be well, whatever that, that means? Yeah, I think um, Barnes Center makes it really easy for people to seek out wellness. And I think that it makes it really exciting. Um, I'm really glad that we touched a lot on like the Mind Spa and the pet therapy, because I feel like that is such good outreach because so many students are so excited about that. I remember my freshman year, um, Barnes Center wasn't open yet. And so we would all anxiously wait for like the emails about when there'd be pet therapy and the 
library and finals week, but now we're able to offer that literally almost every single day of the week. And so it's a great way to just like promote that wellness. And it becomes a really great way for students to just like open up conversations about it because it kind of starts with that first step of just like, you know, just mental wellness and um, trying to decrease feelings of anxiety because even if not every student has anxiety, a lot of students feel anxious about tests, exams, different things on campus. So um, I think Barnes makes it very easy to get excited and very easy to get connected with um, the wellness resources. No doubt about it. We've heard about some of the places. We've seen a few of the places in Barnes. Um, I've got to imagine that you each have a favorite spot. Um, Missy, what's your favorite spot in Barnes? So my favorite spot is actually the peer education suite. Um, so that is not really as accessible to most students on campus, but it's accessible to all the peer educators. And that's a really cool space because that's where we get a lot of our work done. That's where we'll um, all gather together and meet and plan our outreach events and write the content for our health hubs and um, practice and prepare presentations. And it's really cool because uh, a lot of us will just stop in like between classes just to grab coffee, to chat. Um, and it's a great way to like, build community within the peer education program and like because it's open to all the peer educators 24 7 even though I work with substance use I'll I'll walk in and I'll see Amanda or I'll see somebody on the mental wellness team and so um it's cool for me to see how my topic interacts with their topics and how we can advocate that to students yeah community building collaborating sounds sounds like a, a great idea Amanda what's your favorite spot I mean I definitely have to agree with Missy in you know, our peer education suite because not only do we get to hang out with all the other peer educators who are students, we get to hang out with the pro staff members who also work in the office, the grad students, and it's just like a great, like, it feels like a family. But um, outside the health promotion office, I will say my favorite spot would be Otto's Juice Box, which is the smoothie bar that Corey um, got to show everyone on the virtual tour. They make amazing smoothies. Um, my favorite one is the Vita Green one, in case anyone wants to come and stop by and get one. And Corey, you've got to have a favorite spot, or are they all like children? You can't have one favorite. I will get into so much trouble if I answer that question. <laughs> Missy and Amanda will tell everybody. So it's definitely the peer education space is my favorite spot. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. Um, no, seriously, I, I, I think if I had to highlight something, um, I'm actually going to agree with Amanda on this one that the the juice box and it's not it's not to me so much because of the smoothie bar but it's the energy that you experience down there so the the smoothie bar is kind of at the intersection where pet therapy and mind spa are there it's the entrance way to the gym there's so much foot traffic there so i leave you know on a normal work day if i walk out of here at 5 30 or 6 o'clock there are literally hundreds of people down there that's the busiest time in the building and we probably between four o'clock, nine o'clock, we have about 2,500 visitors and there's just so much energy and you just, you, you feel the sense of, you know, you, you mentioned before wellness, Chris, if you build it, they will come. We're going to hit this academic year, you know, probably 500,000 visits to the center from our students. And you just feel the energy in that space and you see them come in. It's good stuff. Yeah. Laura, uh, wants to to pop in and and Laura next time you're on campus definitely make a point to do that um I want to ask both of, of, of you Missy and Amanda what made you want to be peer educators what made you decide to to take on this this role um I can go first um so I originally heard about peer education through one of my friends Megan who's involved with peer education and she was always talking about how much fun it was and how it was a great campus job. And I was looking for a campus job and um, I'm a biology major. So obviously I'm very interested in like health and wellness. Um, so I originally started not having a super, it was kind of going through a transitional period with the fact that it was moving from um, the old building to Barnes. And so I came in just knowing that I was really interested in advocating for student health and wellness. Um, and that has been a huge part of what it is, is really connecting students to those resources and making health and wellness really accessible for students. So that's uh, what really drew me to being a peer educator is being able to act in that liaison role. And then for me, I would say a little different from Missy. Um, I had no idea what a peer educator was on campus um, when I applied. I remember just seeing an email. It sounded fun. I wanted to meet new people. I applied when I was a freshman. So again, I only had my freshman like dorm friends and I was like, oh, I want to explore this campus is huge. Um, so I applied and then again, like 
when I went through training and all of that, I got to meet everyone. I absolutely loved everyone. Absolutely loved like all the content that I was learning, like super excited and super eager to start like spreading this information as well. Um, and then again, like through being a peer educator, I feel like I've found my calling. You know, I think that's what <laughs> I'm gonna call it. Uh, Cause again, I'm a sociology psychology major. I never really thought too much about health or health and wellness, but definitely by being a peer educator, it's definitely a big part of my life now. Yeah, and, and you both use the term family too. I mean, you, you find a, a, something like that where you share a passion, you share a common cause and you really do create community and, and you create a sense of, of family among not just the peer educators and the staff at Barnes, but obviously you're in, interacting with students from all over campus and it's a, it's a great diverse community. So that's a, it's a wonderful way to, to do that kind of thing. Uh, Corey, I wanna ask you really quick, uh, you know, we, we talked about the, the Crowley Mind Spa. I noticed there's no name in front of eSports. Um, there are opportunities for alumni, should they wish, should they have the, the means to, to, to get involved in that way? There are, I mean, Barnes is still in, in that way very new, right? We are absolutely in our infancy, for sure. Um, you know, we're, we're really fortunate to have had the support of obviously Steve Barnes and uh, Dr. KG Tan are really big supporters of the Barnes Center, Crowley Family Mind Spa and Walter's Pet Therapy. And those are all, those are all fantastic. We definitely, in terms of our spaces, um, you know, we're, we're new and we're still paying our bills, I won't lie. Um, so we definitely have other spaces within the facility. And then we have a lot of programs that we're really trying to support our students um, accessibility matters a lot to us. We want to make sure that our students have the access to all of our various programs uh, for, for students who have mental health needs or wellness needs. Uh, so it's just all sorts of opportunities to get involved. Um, you know, obviously a lot of times what we're talking about is when we have these conversations is what's the financial support that we might be able to have. I will also say we're always looking for expertise and knowledge. Uh, we have a ton of alumni who are here as students, obviously that have your lived experience of campus and you've taken your knowledge into whatever your industry is. And we welcome partnerships with our, our alumni in terms of their industry. And you know what, what are the different ways that we can communicate and work with you around that as well? It's a great point. I mean, alumni like to give back to students and knowing that there are opportunities to give back in this way um, is a really important thing as well. Um, I know we're right up on time and I do wanna, um, if anybody has any last questions, pop them in the chat, please. Um, before I let you guys go, Amanda and Missy, um, Pam, my colleague in New York City, wants to ask, I think, a, a good question, certainly for, for selfish reasons. Um, you know, we, we are well, ready to welcome you into the alumni family. Um, but what are you guys going to miss most about being students, being peer educators? Um, and you can't just say Barn Center as a whole, but um, as, you, as you make that transition. I'll start with you, Amanda. I think I'm definitely going to miss like the whole community, like just the fact of like feeling like I'm within a community, like I can just walk 15 minutes down. I'm on campus. I can see, you know, again, like peer educators, students, just friends. I can, you know, walk down the street from my house in the campus neighborhood, like down to my other friend's house, you know, after I graduate, who knows where I'll be, who knows like where all my friends will be, like all my professors and mentors, like they'll still be here at Syracuse. I think I'm just going to miss feeling like I'm home. Like I always say that Syracuse is my home and my mom yells at me because she's like, that is not your home. Like your home is with us in Long Island. And I'm like, sure, like, you know, my second home. <laughs> we, you can keep saying it. You're part of the Orange family forever. You know, we say you're forever orange. We mean it. And, and anytime you come back, you're coming back home. That's, we feel that way too. And as, as I mentioned, look, I graduated in 1995 and came back in 2018 to, to start working here. So um, it, there's a pull. There's definitely a pull. What about you, Missy? Um, yeah, very similar. I love the fact that like living in a university neighborhood, I have 10 minutes walk within everybody I know. I come to campus. Everything I need is there. Um, it's like Amanda said, it's really become a home over the past four years, which uh, was something that I was really just so grateful to have because when I stepped foot on campus freshman year to move into my freshman dorm, it was my first time ever in New York State. So that was a very big change for me. And so I just love the fact that I can walk across campus and see everybody. I love all the different opportunities, I think is a big thing. Um, it's so easy to find access to different educational opportunities. I feel like I'm always learning, not just in my classes. There's just so many resources and so much offered. 
And I feel like it's given me the ability to grow in a lot of different ways. And it's really challenged me as a person. So um, I agree with everything Amanda said. I'm just really going to miss everything. <laughs> um, but those are definitely the highlights. Well, you're always welcome to come back. And Corey, as alumni, we can we can use Barnes, right? We're, we're allowed to go in and check it out and, and use the facilities. Absolutely. Anytime you're on campus as alum, let us know. We will get you in to use the space, see the space, get out of the virtual tour and come check it out. Um, you know, our, our staff, I'm kind of biased, but I think we have some of the best staff on campus. We certainly have the best student staff on campus, as you all are seeing with Missy and Amanda. Um, so if you're here, don't just see the facility. Come talk to us. Check it out. You know, ask more about it. We love to interact. We love to show the space off, quite frankly. Um, so come use it if you're here. As, as well you should. I love walking down towards it as I'm heading to basketball games. It just it lights up. It's just, it looks fantastic. And it's a, it's a wonderful space on campus. And I need to get in there more and take advantage of some of those um, opportunities that are there. So Corey, Missy, Amanda, thank you for joining us. Thank you for the information. Thank you for the, the virtual tour. And we definitely hope that uh, folks can get a chance to get on campus and see the facility with their own eyes. The, the virtual tour and hearing about it is one thing. It sounds impressive. It looks and feels even more impressive. You'll get that sense of community as you as you